this is one of those, uh, like I said, this is one of those weird Sundays. Like, what do you do with it? Uh, and especially when, you know, uh, somebody was asking me, what do you do when Christmas falls on Sunday? Well, we go to church. <laughs> we do it differently, but we go to church. You know, it's a, uh, you would think on Jesus' birthday, the, the institution that was built to would actually function, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, we do it a little different, but we, you know, and I, I was telling somebody, you know, we, when we were pastoring in Alabama, one year it was cold and it iced, and uh, matter of fact, it was so cold that the slab that was in front of our, the door that you went into our building, the, the water had gotten under it, it froze, rose it up, and we couldn't hardly get in the building. It was, uh, but we, uh, Denise and I, and our, at that time we had three small children, and and one other family showed up for church, and uh, we had church. How you know? If Mary and Joseph can be in a stable, we can be at church. <laughs> so we we uh, we did that. But it's just one of those strange seasons that we kind of enter into. And I know a lot of you will be traveling and being with family. Some of you haven't had your Christmas yet. Uh, you haven't done that family celebration that because you're waiting to be with family. Some of you had Christmas part one and you're waiting on Christmas part two. And <laughs> Some of you haven't had any of it because there's not anybody to celebrate with. And so that leaves us with a little weird feeling. It's one of those dilemmas that we get into in this season. And, you know, what I want to talk about today is actually uh, what I called this, this is today is it's called the next day. The next day. You know, December 26th or January 2nd or, you know, I mean, there's the next day. You know, that, that what do we do that next day? You know, Christmas and the build-up to it is exciting. It's filled with anticipation for most people. But what about the next day? The next day. I was watching a Christmas movie and one of the characters said that the worst day of the year is December 26th. <laughs> Um, and I was like, man, that's kind of depressing. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of depressing. I, uh, but in a lot of ways, you know, what do you do? You've had all this big buildup. You have this thing. And then what do you, what's the next day look like? Even in the church, we build up to the celebration of God's love and the miracle of Emmanuel, God with us. But what about the next day? But here's the thing is, is that in, in, in the book of Hebrews Chapter 13, verse 8, there's a strong verse there that we all know, but we need to remind us. It speaks to what should be of true about the next day. And that is this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So He's the same on day after Christmas as He was on the day of Christmas. He's the same... Matter of fact, he's the same on any other day. He's the same. Now, we have those celebrations, and we should do them, and they're wonderful, but we need to remember he's still the same. He's still the same. And what happens is, you know, the narrative of Christmas or Easter or the day of Pentecost are as real the next day as they are on that same day yeah they're just they're there when the lights are gone the decorations are put away the cold of january or the heat of august that's uh, what is still true is is that what's true on the holidays is still true the day after god is still with us god still redeems us god still empowers us what you know, what's true on the holiday is true the day after the holiday and I just can't, you know, this morning I wanted us to remind, how many of you realize that so often in the holidays that there seems to almost be, we can, can get gripped by almost a depression that grabs a hold of our heart, you know, and it's because we, 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 we come and there's an expectation and maybe the expectation doesn't happen or things don't work out. How many of you know no holiday celebration goes the way you planned it? It just doesn't happen. You know, something happens. Some are better. Sometimes you get unexpected things to happen, and it's great, and sometimes they don't, and sometimes there's nobody there, or sometimes you're, you find, but whatever it is, I just want to talk today for a few moments about the fact that God is still the same the day after. 
He's still the same the day after. He's, he's the same. I don't know about you, but if you think about it, if you remember when you first entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ, that day you got saved, and, and oftentimes even the, 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 the few days or weeks after that, that was the most amazing period of time in your life. It was like everything was great, the sun was bright, the grass was green, everything is wonderful. I remember for me it was. It was like the most incredible thing. But then there came a day when it wasn't. Do y'all remember that? You know that, that day when, hey, reality set in. Everything that was before is still happening. I changed. They didn't. I changed. And what we need to understand is that who God was on the day I got saved is still the God whenever all that reality comes back to visit me. He's still the same. But we tend to have to walk through that and work in that. So I just want to share a few thoughts this morning and, and pray for each other because I believe that God wants us to walk in that today. How many of you could really use God to just remind you today? I could, to be honest with you. You know, and just in full transparency, you know, I, it was just tough for me. You know? And you know, us pastors are supposed to be full of faith and the Word of God, and we're, gonna, we're excited. And, and to be absolutely honest with you, I wasn't just real fired up. And you're going, what? What happened to our pastor? <laughs> well, he's human. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I, you know, I was tired, and, and, and I was, you know. But I, I, I saw so if you feel, if I, there's not me preaching at you, it's me preaching at me. You just get to be the... You, you have to endure it. <laughs> yeah, you, you get to endure it. <laughs> so, you know, I just want to just, I just want to share with you today a little bit. I just want to walk with you a little bit today. I know for some of you, man, Christmas hadn't even happened yet. You're still going to meet with family or go or travel. Some of y'all are traveling. And how many you know the going somewhere is exciting? The coming back is not. How many you know that the journey is twice as long coming back? <laughs> it's just, you know, it's like, uh, it's just, <laughs> huh? It takes twice. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just the way it works, you know. It's just that's, that's the way it is. But uh, some of you have some exciting things ahead of you, and I hope that they're filled with joy and blessing and, and, and seeing people you love and experiencing wonderful things. Some of you, your holiday's kind of wrapped up, and now you're, what do I do now? But uh, I just some thoughts I want to share with you. One is, what was true yesterday will, is still true today. What was true yesterday is still true today. There's some realities that we need to understand. One, that stuff wears out. I mean, most of us, maybe yesterday, we got some new stuff. You know, and, it may, and maybe it's cool. You know, it's cool stuff, you know. But one of the realities is that eventually it's going to break. Or it's going to wear out. Or it's not going to work anymore. Or the batteries are going to die. <laughs> but stuff wears out. We need to also understand that people and circumstances change. They just change. But who Jesus has been is who He will always be. And so this is, there's an axiom that I'm going to repeat a couple of times today, and it's for me as much as it is for you, but it is this. Truth, not emotion, needs to guide our life. We need to live by truth, not by our emotions. And emotions are, are good things. I, I, I love to experience and feel things. I, 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 there's some good things about emotions. Emotions, God gave us emotions. They're not a bad thing. You just can't live your life by them. They're not trustworthy. They're not reliable. They change. They, they you know, it can be as simple as the change of the weather or, or what you ate, you know, can it affect your emotions. But what we need to understand is that truth needs to guide our life, not our emotions. I hope that you and pray that you've had a wonderful and joyous holiday and that you will have one today or next week or whenever it happens and that you have been experienced the grace and the love of Christ. But the reality is we'll all experience days of loneliness, heartbreak, struggle, and grief. I didn't get a single amen on that one. 
I know that, but that's just a reality. It's just a reality. You know, we're not immune. We just have a resource. We have a resource. And you know what I want to say is that Jesus is the same in whatever day or circumstance we're in. The days when we're really ha- ha- feeling it and we're good and it's all wonderful, the Jesus is there, that's there is the same Jesus as that when we're down or we're struggling or we're going through hardship or we're grieving or, or losses in our life. He's still the same. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if we'll anchor ourselves to that, not to our emotions or not to what we're feeling in that moment, it will help us navigate those things. So many things want to steal what's true from our lives. Isn't that true? I mean, we're living in, a, in an environment where everything wants to steal the truth from us, whether it's COVID or setbacks or sicknesses or death or, or, or losses, job losses, money losses, whatever it might be. But here's the thing. The reality is, is that Jesus is still Jesus in the midst of all those things that want to steal the reality of who He is in our life. One of the things that I deal with, and, I, and, and I've, had a, I've assumed a new responsibility in, in our district, our state, you know, where I'm working with what's called elders, and this, it's basically, we're the guys that take care of the shepherds. We're the pastors to the pastors, is what we are. And that's what we're doing. That's kind of where I'm been been spending a little time and effort in but in doing that I've been researching and looking and 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 really seeing what's going on and it's an unprecedented time in the lives of, of pastors as a matter of fact more pastors are getting out of the ministry or are wanting to find a way to get out of the ministry than we have ever had in the history of America it's never happened, and it's an unprecedented amount. It's, it's making its way out everywhere we turn. They, I, I, everybody I talk to, every pastor almost that I talk to, they're like, I just wish I could find a way to get out. You know? and, and, or, or, and, and what's sad is what was so exciting in the call of God on their life to start this journey, and now they don't know what to do, and they want to bail. And it's not because they're not men of integrity or women of integrity. It's because the pressures that have come, there is forces that want to steal the reality of Jesus from us. And if it's true for the shepherds, what surely is happening to the people? We know that the Bible says he'll... he'll Get the shepherds and scatter the sheep. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to do that. And what we need to understand is is that we are in a place where we need to be anchored to truth, not the things that we hear. Not Not the news, not the social media, not the, not all that stuff. And, and, and listen, I'm not saying you, you can't connect with that stuff, but if you're building your life around that stuff, you're going to get in trouble. And I understand. I can, get, I can buy into that myself. I want you to understand something here. We have to remember who Jesus is. Because if Jesus is still who Jesus is, then all that stuff can't, can't steal our anchor. Can't steal that which will so, sustain us and help us and hold us in the difficult moments. I'm not, I I just, I'm speaking, just remember, I'm speaking to me as well. You get to be the beneficiaries of that. (laughs) But I'm speaking to me. People are overwhelmed, but we must remember Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what do we do in the midst of that, tr- that reality? Well, here's the thing. We let go of things that aren't truth. We let go of things that aren't truth. <clears throat> How do you know? Stuff can't give you joy. It can make you happy. I'm not a... It's not a listen, having stuff, I... I 
I like it. I love watching my kids get presents and, and see what they do. But I realize this, that's not their joy. Your stuff can't, and all of, everything we have that's in this world, all the stuff of this world is passing away. It's not going to be here forever. Yes, we can enjoy it. It's great. Thank God for it. But it's not going to give us joy. It can't give us joy. It might make us happy for a season, but it can't give us joy. You know, there are things that, I, oh man, I'm so grateful that I have and that, that I get to enjoy. A car that starts, that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> You know? <laughs> if you've ever had one that didn't, <laughs> you realize how wonderful that is. But none of that produces joy. It just doesn't. And so we need to understand something here. What Jesus says, says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all that stuff will be added to you because it's not what produces joy. God produces joy in our hearts. Now, I get lost in this, you know, how I, I, you know, if we just had this, then life would be okay. And having you know, that's a lie. It may make it more pleasant or easier, and it's not that it's bad, it just doesn't bring you joy. So stuff doesn't bring joy. Two, we believe this lie that people won't hurt us. <laughs> I am so grateful for family and community and all these things but if you're counting on everybody to just never do anything that will hurt you you are in trouble listen in the best of relationships people hurt each other it's just this it's not that they're bad relationships I Denise and I love each other deeply and have a great marriage, but we have both done things that hurt each other. Not meaning to, but we just do it. In a moment of self-absorption, any of y'all have one of those? We say or do things. People, people, will, we believe this lie that somehow people won't hurt us, but they will. We've got to remember this, what the writer of Hebrews tells us a little earlier in the same chapter I've read from. He says, keep your lives free from the love of money. Be content with what you have because the Lord says, the God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. There's only one who will be faithful. There's only one you can count on. There's only one who can anchor yourself to. And sometimes he works through others, and that's a wonderful thing. That's why we need community. It's the Jesus in you and I that we connect with. But here's the thing. Whenever I get a little disconnect from Jesus, I can do something that will hurt you. But if I understand this, that God's always consistent. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. He's never going to fail. He's going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. I love community, but I have this base understanding in my life. Even in community, I have to have grace because I know they're working out their salvation as I'm working out my salvation. So I can't, I can't base my faith on what they do. I have to base my faith on who God is. And then together we discover that. The people, there are people that we can trust more than others. And we need to. You are not an island. You will not make it on your own. Let me just say this. You are not an island. You will not make it on your own. But our anchor is Jesus. And there's another lie that comes to us. And it does all kinds of damage. And it's this lie that Christians don't struggle. And, it, and the reality is, is that people, you know, people will tell us that if you're struggling, there must be something wrong with you. No. Now listen, if you've done something stupid, yeah, you're going to struggle. But because you're struggling doesn't mean always that you've done something stupid. <laughs> I... 
<laughs> you know, there's some verses that we don't put on our refrigerator. Psalm 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, <laughs> but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Or about John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, the reality is that, 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 that we need to acknowledge this, that, that we, we will go through tough times, that we're going to have struggles, that we're going to face difficulties. That's the place where we truly learn that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's where we anchor into truth that helps us navigate. I've learned more about who Christ is in the difficulties of my life than I ever did in the wonderful so high places in my life. It's when I thought I was all by myself that I discovered that God never leaves me. It's when I thought there was no hope or there was no reality. He shows up and He does for me. It's when I think He's forgotten me that He sends somebody to tell me He cares. So we need to remember that. The second thing is we need to hang on to the things that are true. We need to anchor to truth that are true. Number one, God loves us. If there's anything you need to remember, if there's any truth that you need to hang on to, that no matter what, God loves you. You say, well, you don't know what I've done. Yeah. There is no, you know, for, in God's eyes, sin is just sin. You know, we think we have done the worst thing in the world, and he's like, well, all of it's bad. It's just all bad. And I love you anyway. <laughs> I've done something to deal with that. It's not going to make me stop loving you. It's a matter of fact, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever should believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. What He said is, I'm going to love you enough to take care of that. I'm going to do something about that. But the reality is we need to get this into our heart. We need to have this anchored in our head that we are loved by God. Not only do we need to know that, but we need to know that our brokenness is the open door for God's grace. It's so hard sometimes to admit we're broken. <laughs> it's just hard, you know. We, you know, I'm God's man of faith and power. And in reality, I'm just struggling. And what happens is when we can't be broken, it gives the enemy a foothold to begin to do the tyranny of destruction in our life. He begins to get us to believe things that are not true. Pride goes before a fall. And if we'll just acknowledge, I'm broken. I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time. I need God's grace. I need Him to speak to me. I need you to pray for me. I need you to walk with me. I need you to speak truth to me. Because sometimes I, I, what I see isn't true. And that, I mean, you know, that's just a reality. We're not narcissists. Most of us just look at ourselves and believe we're very flawed. And other people don't see it. It's our brokenness that is the open door. Psalm 51, 17. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. David, in the midst of his worst sin, his failing away, comes to reality and understands something. It's when I'm broken, 
you can do something in my life. And I just, I want to encourage you, man, when you're broken, just be, be open. Say, I'm broken. Now, you don't have to do that to everybody. Don't get on the internet. And please, here's the thing. This is my venting here. Don't do that on Facebook. Because you're inviting yourself to have people step into your life and tell you things that will be destructive and painful and misinformation. Don't get on Instagram. Don't do that. Snapchat, whatever it is. No. But find somebody in your life and just say, could you pray for me? I'm struggling. Could you speak truth to me? And I'm willing to hear it. Sometimes that's painful. But it's healing. It will incise the wound and let the poison come out so truth can heal. So hang on, it's true. Our brokenness is the open door for God's grace. And remember this, this is a truth that you need to hang on to. Jesus is still Lord. Jesus looked at them and he said, with man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. We need to remember that God's still God. That whatever what's going on in our world, whatever the day is, whether it's you know Christmas Day or the day after Christmas, He's still God. He still can do the impossible. He, there's not a situation He can't bring His grace. The second thing, if what's true yesterday is still true today, then what's true today will be true tomorrow. Let me remind you, truth, not emotion, needs to guide our life. All of us have lost joy, of the joy that is produced because of what God's doing in our life today for fear of what will happen tomorrow. We're afraid addiction will come back or God will forsake us or that our enemies will overwhelm us or that tomorrow can't possibly as be as good as today. How many of you know that limits who God is? And you know, worrying about tomorrow is the most fruitless activity we ever do. It just, because we have no control over it. Matter of fact, we might not even get there. You know, so what, why worry about it? it it's, it's, not, it's not a productive thing. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's already Lord over the tomorrow before tomorrow ever gets here. How many of you have, are like me? You've worried about a problem that either one never occurred or just really wasn't as bad as I worried it being. Have you all ever done that? Man, I built it up in my head. I've got all stressed out. I'm trying to do all, I mean, I'm, I'm making myself miserable. And then when it all happens, it's like, no, that wasn't a big deal. Oh, my goodness. I wasted so much energy for something I couldn't control. Instead of saying, Lord, Lord, I trust that you're in control of tomorrow. I'm going to be faithful in today and believe you're going to take care of tomorrow. I just, uh, as we head into a new year and the day, the next day, I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm ready to say, God, I want to base my life on what's true. I want to be anchored to truth. That doesn't mean everything's going to be great. Doesn't mean everything's going to work out in the way I want it or I thought it would. But it will work out in the way God wants it to. Philippians tells us to not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present our request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and minds 
in Christ Jesus. I believe this. While we celebrated the miracle of Christ's birth on December 25th, you know, one of the realities is Jesus probably wasn't born on December 25th. You know, we don't really know. But while we celebrate that, December 26th is as good a day for a miracle as any other. As a matter of fact, December 27th will be as good a day for a miracle as any other too. I, as a matter of fact, I'm, rather, I'm going to choose to say, okay, God, I believe that tomorrow's going to be awesome. It's just going to be, it's going to be uh, incredible because you're incredible and you're in it already. That doesn't mean that things won't happen. But it just means that God's still the God of miracles. So I just want to want to ask you this morning, pray for me. Just pray for me. I, you, Denise, I mean, I'm, I, you know, you can't lie because your wife knows who you really are. You know, I mean, I mean she understood. Like, yeah, and this is just transparency. I love you, and I love being with you. Let me make that statement really clear. I love you, and I love being with you. I just didn't particularly want to come and do this today. That's just transparency. And if that offends you, I'm sorry. I've been doing this pretty consistently for 32 years. <laughs> it's not like I'm not going to show up. <laughs> it's just that I was tired. I was just tired. A lot going on. A lot of it's good stuff. I mean, it's, it, it, listen, I've had nine little people all over me for two days straight. It's awesome. It's a good thing, man. I mean, you know, Peba. That's my grandparent name. It's awesome. I, you know, but I just worn out tired yeah. and you start feeling like you're operating not with anointing but with function and I don't want to do that I want to operate in the spirit now you do things because those are the vehicles by which it can happen that's why I showed up today, because I believe that Jesus will show up today. I believe that whether I felt it or not, that when God's people get together, He shows up. That He does amazing things. So don't, don't think I'm not, you know, I understand. I'm choosing to operate in truth, not emotion. Does that make sense to you? That's why I'm here. I, I believe this, that when we get together, when we praise His name, when we share the Word, He still shows up. But I know some of you, you've gone through difficult, emotional, hard seasons. It's been tough. But let me remind you, Jesus is the same yesterday he was, he was the same through the difficulty you went through. He's going to be the same today. He has promised that. And I, I'm here to tell you with unshakable faith, He will be there tomorrow. He will be faithful. He will show up. And He will show up with who He is and the truth of who He is. How that plays out is up to Him. I just can't worry about it. as much as that is one of my tendencies. And some of you too. So this morning, I just, I'm here. And I believe that December 26th is a great day for a miracle. Amen. It's a great day for a miracle. Maybe you need a miracle today. Actually, I believe this. We need a miracle every day. I just think that miracles ought to be the everyday thing. You know? That, 
So I'm, I just is like, can we just get a miracle today? Can we ask God for a miracle today? Can we, in the mess that maybe our life is, believe God to do something where he reveals who he is based on the truth of who he is and not how we particularly feel at this moment? Amen? Maybe your body needs a physical healing. I'm here to believe that Jesus is a miracle worker. Maybe your mind's just messed up. I believe he's a miracle worker. I don't know what. I just believe he's a miracle worker. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's going to be what he was when we first met him. And he'll be even more so when we see him again. Amen? Amen. I'm done. You know, I know there's not a lot of us here today, but maybe we could just pray one for another today. Any of you all just need God to show himself to you today? I do. Some of us need a nap. (laughs) I'm one of them, I think. (laughs) Will you stand with me? I know that some of you, because of circumstances, your holiday celebration will be next week or tomorrow. Or the, I pray that you have a day filled with joy and happiness and grace of the Lord. But I pray more so that you have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit and the reality of God's miraculous grace. Some of you are going through grief today. There's been loss in your life. And holidays magnify it. Just magnify it. I'm here to believe this, that the, the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit is here present. Some of you, the holiday didn't work out the way you wanted it to. It just... But you know what? Jesus is the same. He's the same. And He'll be the same. He'll be the same today as He was yesterday, and He'll be the same tomorrow. So I'm asking you to just join with me in believing for a miracle today. Can we do that? Hear the truth because the truth will set you free. Amen? If you want to join me here, we'll pray together. If you want to stay where you are. I'm, I have no agenda here. I just want God to be real. I want His miraculous power and grace to flow. I want Him to become real in our lives in such a way that, that we are just, all we can see is the glory and the presence of God. That we just get wrapped up in who He is and, and all the other stuff goes away. All the, the fears or the, or the anxieties or the struggles or we just let it go and we just see God glorified. Can you, can you and I agree to that today? You know, I hope that you have an amazing transition into the new year. May these days, if you're off, may you have a great time, rest. If you're traveling, may you be safe and experience wonders and joy. If you're at home, if you have to work, 
I was, I was just uh, talking to Bessie before service. She, she had to work yesterday. She was a nurse. But that was a blessing because she was a blessing to those on the floor that she was ministering to. And we're grateful for that. Thank God for people like her that are out representing Jesus. She's a nurse, in case you didn't know that. And thank God for that. And I just believe this. December 26 is a great day for a miracle. And I believe December 27th will be a good day for him too. Amen? And I pray that you will... Well, here's the, the truth is, you're going to receive a miracle whether you're aware of it or not. You just are. Because it is the nature of our God. He is a miracle-working God. That's the truth. What we just have to do is to see it. Amen? That's true. So I pray God's perception in you change that you may see what He has already done and that you walk in it. That I will too. That I will too. That you walk in the reality of what Christ has already done. He said it's finished. He's already done it. Just open our eyes to see and our ears to hear that we may know and receive. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.